proud to turn up at this stage of the tournament. Absolutely fantastic turnout today. The thunder and the whirlwind on the table. So let's get to the commentary box. A ray of sunshine and a stiff breeze. Phil Studd and Neil Foles. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Well, it's nearly seven years since these two great players faced each other across the Green Bay. So this is a meeting that's somewhat overdue. And of course, Robertson starts as the favourite. But as we know, Jimmy has put together some good results in recent times. Took out Joe Perry from 3-0 down in qualifying for the German Masters. Whitewashed the aforementioned Ryan Day, runner-up at the World Grand Prix last evening at the Scottish Open. So I'm sure that Neil, who would have the utmost respect for the whirlwind in any case, will not be taking this match lightly. As we know, Robertson hasn't been at the top of his game recently. Good win over O'Sullivan in Preston last week, but then he lost to Hawkins in the following round. So still searching for his A game after a few barren months by his standards. Intriguing matchup, all things considered. first meeting was way back in 2004 that was in the wild card round at the Masters when White won comfortably 6-2 at that stage of his career Robertson was all about long pots like these and there's a good start not the cannon he wanted and of course since then Robertson has added so much more to his game he's always been a terrific long potter but now he has the all-round game, tremendous scorer, terrific safety player. He's the full package. Yeah. Just the safety for the whirlwind. And I guess the thing, Neil, about Jimmy is one. that he's come to be defined, hasn't he, by his near misses at the World Championship. To make the final at the Crucible six times is an achievement in itself, but it's also somewhat clouded what he has one in the game which is 10 ranking titles including the UK Championship and the Masters a lot of professionals wouldn't mind a record like that oh absolutely uh, there's no doubt that he's been a great player and a great winner over the years and also as we see a good safety shot from Neil six crucible finals makes him one of the great crucible players doesn't it I mean, we know that there's been wonderful champions but he's right up there having reached the final all those times it's a shame he never won one but he's had a quite a good season he's had his results we mentioned that he beat ryan day 4-0 in one of the earlier home nations events and we've also discovered that in short format snooker the underdog can win indeed we've already seen john higgins four times a champion here at the welsh open taken out today by sam baird Miss Neil Robertson four. Lee Walker will play the winner of this one after his 4 2 win earlier over Reese Clark. Lee, another veteran of the tour. Uh, almost a shot to nothing couldn't leave anything but maybe the ready played which seemed unlikely that he would stick so in first talking about Robertson's form it hasn't been all that but at least the fact that he beat O'Sullivan last week in the World Grand Prix that was his first one against Ronnie in the last three he's had a few heavy defeats he was beaten by the winner of the tournament in the next round but 
Eight. Yeah, so sort of laid that ghost to rest, I guess, the rocket. Yes, and it wasn't just a win. It was a convincing one, wasn't it? He scored heavily. He shut O'Sullivan out, played a very good safety game. It was more like the Robertson of old. Nine. And no shame in losing to Hawkins last week because he was in sublime form. One of the best snooker he's ever played, arguably the best, Hawkins, with the way he scored. Slight wobble as he reached the finishing line in Preston, but he got over it, and that's all that matters. But the performance against Liang in the semi-finals in particular was outstanding. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, it's half decent chance here already. Uh, three to four, maybe even five open reds. Actually, looking at the way the bunch of reds are placed. The reason I say that is the bottom red, when that goes, the one just to the left of it or above it, as from that camera angle, is also in the equation and maybe. The one above that one also, so it, they all seem to link up, potting one, maybe some others go out in the open. He's overhit there, but it's all right. If anything, giving him a nice angle up and down from the bottom cushion for the next red. Thirty-six. It looked tight, and he played it particularly well. Choice of blue or pink. Jimmy sits in hope. As a left-hander, I think there is a chance that Neil Robertson will take the pink. Forty-three. Forty-four. Might have been different for White had he got a better kiss off his initial long red. Didn't get position on the black. And then in playing out of snooker. Fifty-one. Left Robertson with a red to left centre. This is the result. 52. I saw Neil Robertson during his campaign last week in Preston and uh, talking about maybe getting a little bit 
too much of a reaction about when he maybe gets a bad bounce or a kick and sometimes 59. throws his arms in the air when he said he was going to stop doing it he's going to forget it because i think it can actually be counterproductive if you start to uh make them worse and the situation becomes worse and i think he needs to get on with the game and it was evident in his last couple of matches he's playing better when he wasn't worrying about conditions he's already made this into a frame winning contribution that was frame ball barring snookers 67 68. Well, he was practicing right up until the moment that he was introduced to the crowd. Neil Robertson, and he looks razor sharp, doesn't he? Start of this match. This is White's attempted escape from the snooker. 73. Yes, and he just missed the black. I guess a lot of people have thought, well, that's going to go back and he's going to have another try, but the shot that Jimmy left to the left middle was never going to result in doing any damage if he missed it. 74. Now it's a question of how many. The bottom red goes, the other two are potable as well. It's a measure of his scoring ability that even in a season where by his standards he's underachieved, he's still managed to make 36 centuries already, Robertson. And there's still a lot of snooker to be played during this campaign. 81. Managed 82. an eye-watering 103 centuries in a single season back in 2013-14, a record that might not be beaten. Even allowing for the number of tournaments that we now have on the calendar, this is the 14th ranking event of the current season. As Mark Williams alluded to just before this match got underway, there was a time when there were only Late. half a dozen. It wasn't all that long ago. In fact, the last time these two players played, that was about the tally in terms of ranking events in an entire season. Well, the century is gettable without any need to get the, the yellow into play or pot it down the cushion. And it's always the perfect start to a match. Stuart Bingham made a century this afternoon at the beginning of his win over Matthew Stevens. Yeah, this is more like the Neil Robertson. 102. That we've come to know and love. Deadly in amongst the Reds. He won't be too bothered about the yellow. The century was already sealed, 102. That's a real statement of intent from the Thunder against the whirlwind. First blood to Neil Robertson in style. He leads Jimmy White by frame to nil. He failed to escape from a snooker and Neil left Robertson. Robertson a tricky red. It wasn't straightforward to left centre, but he knocked it in. And he was never in any danger thereafter. That was Robertson at his very best. And it wouldn't be a bad time for the Melbourne left-hander to recapture his very best form with the World Championship not too far away now, just a couple of months away, middle of April. Incredible that it's come around so quickly. Well, this guy knows all about what it's like to play at the Crucible. Been involved in some of the greatest matches in the history of the game there. How he would love to get back for another crack at it. He'll have to win three qualifying matches to do so. Well, Neil Robertson has already given everyone an indication that he's playing OK. That man has got to work on here. Can't afford to give him half a chance by the looks of things. It's really all that he did leave. And that was when he was in the snooker. I mean, what more can you do? saying earlier on, I mean, the way that the draw structure is in this tournament, the 16 seeds are put in a place where they can't play each other and everyone else is thrown in. And, and this is one of many 
rounds in the round of 128, which has seen two very good players up against each other. Pretty much unheralded players playing each other. It's a tournament where the luck of the draw it plays a huge part. The match that sticks out in my mind is that we've got Marco Fu and Martin Gould against each other. The likes of that. Ronnie playing Tom Four. That's a tough one. Oh, this is vintage Robertson at the moment. There's one of those long-range pots for which he's famed. Not positioned to go with it, but very well cued off the cushion. Interesting way of playing it because he didn't want to come to bulk anyway with the red down there. The greens come to the rescue of Jimmy White. Six. Dean Robertson, six. He's already probably one to the left middle. I don't think that acute one to the right middle is is not really on, even as well as he's hitting them. He gets the cue ball down to underneath this black cushion instead. And also to the point where he can't leave the screw shot back to there. Yeah, you could see Jimmy was cross with himself with the shot he played because that allowed Neil Robertson to get the cue ball onto the cushion and make this shot. That much harder for the whirlwind. Well, that's not a good shot. Never got underneath the cue ball enough there. After the shot applause, not a good day for Kyron Wilson. Knocked out by Sean O'Sullivan. Yes, four frames to two. Great win for Sean O'Sullivan. Kyron Wilson, another big name to bite the dust early. Former ranking titleist, of course. Neil Robertson, not uh, all that interested in taking on a red, keeping his opponent under pressure. There's where the cue ball was, that they could have played a red to the left middle. There's nothing all that easy in there. No, and I suppose he's conscious of the fact that he doesn't want to give Jimmy an easy starter and allow him to establish some rhythm, because he knows that White can be dangerous if he does that. 
They're looking to keep the pressure on, having frozen him out in the opening frame. Showing him the utmost respect, and that's exactly what he should be doing. The overall head-to-head -head is three wins apiece. As I mentioned, they haven't played since 2010. The game has changed radically since then. Just looking at the situation, Philip, I'm wondering whether he's got any way of, of playing safe. And if not, I think he's going to go down the old route. Of, if you can't see a safety shot, try and roll one in. Try and pop one to the right middle. Because he can't get to the other end of the table with the red there. He can't get back to where he is now. What can he do? So he's got to try and pop one. I mean, he knew that he was leaving something, but uh, there are occasions when there really is nothing else open to a player. I mean, I dread to think how many Neil will make here, because he looks sharp in the first frame. If he gets on a colour... Well... Incredibly, that was his problem, getting onto the first colour. Surely, if it had got on something, he could have missed from here. The balls are literally all in the middle of the table. Yeah, he'd have got very favourable odds on Robertson making one from that opportunity, but that might be the long and short of it. In the event, he pots a very good yellow. What a shot that was. Three. I mean, he's played it very coolly and casually. And it uh, held its line, most importantly. And the same rules apply. If he can get onto a colour, I would think he'll make plenty. It was a good shot, wasn't it? Because he knew he was leaving Jimmy White this opportunity if he'd missed that yellow. Well, if he's playing the red near the left middle, he's got to be careful about crashing into the red just below it. Ian Off's not a million miles away. The cube was not really naturally going into a very favourable position with top. So that's the better oh. shot. And uh, as I was explaining, he really could make a lot from such an inviting position. Robertson Eight. seeking his second Welsh Open crown, won it back in 2007. Hard to believe that was a decade ago now. Beating Andrew Higginson from a couple of frames behind in a final frame decider. Eight. Nine. And although it's been by Robertson's stratospheric standards an indifferent season he has managed to win a title the Riga Masters yeah the problem with that Philip is it was quite a long time ago it was right at the beginning of the season wasn't it and it's like anything else the snooker season runs almost over 12 months solid maybe a slight 50. break after the world championships And by his standards, that's a long time. And by his standards, that was a very Robertson, surprising 50. miss. Just as he looked as though he was going to take a firm grip on this match, Jimmy's belly had a look in so far. That was a surprise. The question is whether the whirlwind can punish him for it.
Yeah, he suffered three consecutive first round losses, didn't he, O'Sullivan? China Championship, Champion of Champions. And then yeah. bowed out before the televised stages of the UK Championship. That was perhaps the biggest surprise of all. Four. Beaten by Peter Lyons pretty convincingly in qualifying. The win over O'Sullivan was certainly one of his best wins of the last few months. And he started extremely well tonight. Five. But he's led his opponent back in. Hmm, interesting. Didn't sound like the best of context. The cube didn't travel quite as far as he was thinking it would. He's got to make this tell this chance. Because I get the feeling he's not going to get more than one, perhaps two a frame at most. Well, that little nudge on the middle jaws worked very nicely, actually. Jimmy White with that very familiar address of the ball. Very, very low, almost on the slate Seven. at the tip of the queue. Yeah, with a hair's 18. breadth between the tip of that queue and the queue ball. And a few times in his career I've seen him feather that. Not quite as dramatically as Anthony Hamilton did in the semi-finals of the Northern Ireland Open, but... A bit of an occupational hazard 25. when you address the cue ball as tightly as Jimmy has down the years, but it's largely paid off, hasn't it? Well, in excess of three million pounds earned on the table, as well as legendary status. Surely the most popular player ever to have played the game. 26. Took on the mantle of the people's champion from his... Very good friend, the late, great Hurricane Higgins. I'm not sure how much of an advantage that huge amount of support he carried around with him was. I think at times it was something of a burden. It put even more pressure on his shoulders to perform. And it also inspired his opponents. You know, Stephen Hendry used to get quite a bit of stick from the Wembley Conference Centre crowd. But rather than be intimidated by it, it just inspired him to greater heights and he had a great record against white there had a great record against everyone six times a winner forty forty one he's taken these nicely so far has jimmy Ten tables in use in total here, including the two match tables. Keeps rubbing his hands together. Maybe he's a bit cold out there. But he looks sharp. This one at a bit more distance between cue ball and object ball could potentially find him out but what he's played and got in this break all hit the middle of the pocket there's the old rub of the hands a bit chilly yeah, that was a better pop than it looked 
Yes, it was good. And uh, he looks as if comes here in form. He, he said it to me that he's hitting the ball well, but I'll be honest, he always says that. Yes, it's one thing doing it on the practice table, isn't it? It's quite another to bring that form to the match table. Fifty-four. Lead now 33, but still 51 there, so another couple of reds required as again Jimmy rubs his hands together. Normally, snooker venues are pretty hot and clammy places under the lights. A little extension on the butt of his cue, give him some extra reach here. Another very good pot. And that could be a frame winner. Indeed. Now that uh, red up the table. If you could play on that, that man has been put onto the back foot. That is okay. And he's not right behind it, which would be very handy. 62. But this is a good contribution. Can concentrate completely on the pot. It's frame ball. I think he's worried about the plain ball. It might be coming close to the middle pocket, the cue ball. They can't afford that to happen for obvious reasons. Thin, good shot. This has been a fine break. And Six generally eight. a very good standard so far. Exactly what the whirlwind would have been looking for here. He's punished Robertson's surprising potting error with a frame winning break. Clinical. It's what you've got to be to take out one of the very best. Jimmy White spent many, many years being one of the hunted. Now he's the hunter. Well, 102 from Robertson with his first scoring attempt in frame one. What a response from the wind. 75. Enough for his own 102 break. Seventy-seven. Well, Robertson was showing. Jimmy White, the utmost respect in that first frame in a bit. And this is why, 18. because he's more than aware that form is temporary, but class is permanent, is permanent and White still has that in abundance, 84. as he's proving here. This is a little gem of a match, right into two frames. It's been very good. 89. That was a very bad miss, and I couldn't see a reason for it. I don't think it was bad contact. It was a bad shot. Ever since, it's been vintage Jimmy White. He's made just one century so far this season. And that is number two, and what a break it was. Magnificent stuff. That's why... He is the most popular player ever to pick up a cue. That was poetry in motion. Frame a piece. Will win Jimmy White here at the Welsh Open, but I don't think we were expecting a start quite like this. 102 from Robertson in the first frame. And the whirlwind saying, anything you can do. Responding in kind in the second with exactly the same break. Two terrific breaks. Game on. What a start.
Well, those stats read well, don't they? 97%. Jimmy White barely missed anything. But I suppose when you get a century of peace in the first two frames, it's not going to ever make bad reading, is it? Saw Jimmy wince there as he walked back towards his chair. Wants to get that cue ball tight to the cushion whenever possible. Knows how lethal Robertson can be when he's given a little bit of leeway. He's really keyed up for this match, Jimmy. You can tell that. Been looking forward to it all day. to choose between them at the moment in any of the stats. But that could be a mistake. Best kiss. Six. Seven. Yep. Terry Camilleri refereeing this one this evening. Yes, he certainly wouldn't have wanted this red. It's more difficult than he would have hoped. Well, played it well. It just went in off the near part of the pocket. Didn't touch the jaw, though. Well, I think he's looking at going just through the edge of the bunch there. That's a good shot, but the other red was the problem. He looked at that. It was the red up the table that he looked destined to crash into. Very good recovery. Twenty-nine. 
third frame, and it looks like we might be set for our third big break. Both players really up for this this evening. Thirty-seven. Neil Robertson has missed just two balls this evening. One of them was academic after he'd made a century. The other was expensive. It led to Jimmy White's hundred break in frame two. Forty-three. White has only missed one himself. Standard couldn't be much higher. 44. I think it's a good point actually you're making about when you the player will miss the odd shot at the end of a break. When maybe this break is 80, 90, even 100 at the time, it means nothing with regards to the match. And of course, we include those in the stats as much as we would in reverse, players potting balls in the frames. But in live play, it's been close to flawless stuff with that one error. Forty nine. Fifty. It's a loose safety from Jimmy that led to this opportunity for Neil Robertson. And he knew as soon as he played it that he might have invited this response. Still plenty of reds to be potted though. Fifty-five. Well, the two reds might be a plant, but not from certainly where the cue ball is, or not very easily. Maybe the red to the middle is possible. I'd have to use side, I think. There was a red sticking out he could play on there. Didn't have to go up for that one. Gave it a lot of thought and a lot of care and attention. And rolls it in. And that should be a frame winner. Well, it's one chance snooker at the moment. Sixty-one. This red and another high-value colour, and Jimmy will need snookers. Sixty-two. He takes the blue, he could only tie, but there's another straightforward red waiting. Yes, yeah, it's just a slight angle on that. So, on the brink. Uh, a 2 1 lead. There is the Motor Point Arena in all its glory. Leo Sullivan, of course, defending his title, now looking for a record fifth 
Welsh Open crown. He starts out against Tom Ford, who made a maximum break at the German Masters. That won't be a gimme for O'Sullivan. 68. Well, only 59 left, so it looks for all the world as though Robertson is retaking the lead with another clinical contribution. It's a feast of snooker for the crowd so far this evening on table one. 75. Seventy-six. The distinct possibility of a third century in three frames. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. Play with right hand running side on that shot. 87. Now the other red is more difficult than this one, so this is the one he played on first. 87. 88. What a terrific shot to release the final red. Look at the action he got on the cue ball there. 84. Well, this is the moment then. 94. And we'll find out whether he gets another century because. His rest shot's well within his compass. Very nice striking. say about this match so far just wonderful snooker 102. he was half hoping he missed there because yeah. there'd be another break of 102 <laughs> it's all very symmetrical but uh, he cracks on One hundred and seven. i'm sure that would have been a record for Someone in very dark rooms to look at for long times. <laughs> Two centuries, both of the same score. But anyway, the third one was not possible. It's a tremendous standard, they all joking aside. The rest of it is just a stat. This is um, an example of two players who are not missing anything here. Not until that one, but a great break. A great break indeed. And two centuries from Neil Robertson, one from Jimmy White. Three nigh on perfect frames. The Thunder now 2 1 up. Frames, three century breaks. Neil Robertson with 102 in the first. Jimmy White with a vintage 102 of his own in the second. Neil Robertson. Right. And then a slightly loose safety proved to be the whirlwind's last shot in the third. 111 from Neil Robertson to restore his lead. What a start to the evening. 2 1 for the former Welsh Open champion. And this is the Neil Robertson that won the World Championship in 2010. Two UK titles on his CV as well. The Masters five years ago. One of those very elite players to have won Snooker's Holy Trinity, the Triple Crown, the Big Three, whatever you want to call it. That form has largely deserted him in recent months, but it seems to be back again.
covered the red. Jimmy White has a pot success of 97% and he's 2-1 down. Still to come this evening on table one, Ryan Day, runner-up, of course, last evening. The World Grand Prix against Dave Gilbert. Well, I know Alan McManus rates very highly for his Q action. Very good player, Dave. Former ranking finalist. Should be a good match. Both attacking players. Former World... UK and Masters champion Sean Murphy has been put out to pasture on table eight. He's playing Jamie Curtis Barr. I don't know if Sean has said something or some upset someone in authority, but uh, there you go. Out in the long grass. Yeah, I think that's because of the swap with Ryan, isn't it, who was meant to play this afternoon. So, um, Jill Murphy has been sent out to pasture. He was actually meant to be on table two. Anyway. That is uh, an error, but it might have got away with it a little bit, given his awkward queuing. Yeah, what would otherwise have been... An easy red, so much harder. White asks for the spider. It's not just potting the red, of course, it's getting position as well. Yeah, it was a much harder than it looked, that shot. Robertson was a little bit lucky there to leave Jimmy hampered as he did. Had to hit it pretty hard to get the cue ball back for a colour. He stayed down on that one. I, I'm not certain whether he was sure if it was going to drop or not. In the bottom jaw. Very studious, isn't he, these days? He's a different player to the one who first came over. Of course, he's a better player, but even I think when he won the world title, he's, he's playing a more defensive uh, game these days. Safety is good. Maybe not as exciting as he once was, but... He, uh, he's playing well tonight. He's looking pretty decent out there. Yes, and maybe that's partially Eight. due to the fact that he's lost a little bit of confidence with his disappointing set of results in recent times. Nine. And he will be, become more attacking once again if he can find that old self-belief that he had before. That'll come with victories. Certainly took a positive step last week in beating O'Sullivan. The Rocket having got the better of him pretty handsomely in the three meetings prior. Ran into a very much informed Barry Hawkins in the next round. 16. But certainly signs here that he is getting back to his best. 17. Just turned 35, which is no age these days. Uh, 
Well, I think he thought he'd missed that. I'm guessing he got a kick. Well, it was a strange old shot, wasn't it? I mean, he's nearly not reached. He's held the spot. 22. That's an odd one. I don't think I've seen, ever seen anyone with a problem with a shot like this. OK, the pace may have come out of it, but very odd. Anyway, he continues the break more importantly than anything else. Blue goes on to the yellow spot, the highest available. Twenty-three. Just as well he's super slim, Robertson, because he was perilously close to touching the red on the side cushion with his waistcoat there. Managed to avoid it. And talking of slim, of course, Jimmy White has lost a huge amount of weight in recent months, much as four stone on a real fitness drive. He certainly felt the benefits of that as regards his game. 31. I think he's needed to adjust his cue action a bit because his whole stance now with that weight loss is somewhat different than it was, say, six months ago. There's always slightly top side, but it just came down a, a millimetre or so, half a millimetre. And he's got the angle to get into the bunch again. Yeah, I think Robertson, for the second time in this break, thought he'd miss one there. He was walking. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Well, before he was known as the Thunder from Down Under, Neil Robertson's nickname was the Melbourne Machine, and this is why his ability to constantly knock in the big breaks, the long pots, metronomic accuracy. But that has not worked as planned. 54. Might have to settle for something less than 100 this time. Yes, it, they really didn't split there, and I guess it, they never were going to from the angle he went in at. But, uh, but once, I think he'll have to call it quits on this break. Play a safety shot. Robertson 54. So just 54 this time from Robertson. Handy lead, but not decisive. His own pot success now at 95 percent. Now then, can Jimmy get through to the potting angle on this red to the right of the black? He can. Chance for a counter-attack. Doesn't look too promising from that angle.
He was able to knock it in, though. So, can he recreate the scoring power of frame two? Six. Well, he's going to have to try. Seven. Yeah, that wasn't clean, but at least it did. It was close enough to drop. But this really would be an effort if he could make enough to get at least back into the frame here. Because, as we've said, he hasn't done an awful lot wrong. Just run into one a little bit, hasn't he? Naturally coming away from the Reds a touch here. Mm. Well, pink so going back on this spot, I, th I would say, has covered the Red to the right corner. It must be tight. If he can get to that one, I think it's the one he'd play. Shake of the head would suggest otherwise. A bit risky to take on the double. Forty one the lead now for Robertson. If this goes in, it's likely to be three one. One. Nine. It's black and one more red. White will need snookers. Same equation with the pink. So, as uh, Philip said, this is the one. 16. Well, you've got to hand it to Neil Robertson. He's been 20. clinical this evening. He missed one ball in the second frame and was punished to the full, but he's made precious few other mistakes. 21. He's scoring very heavily. His long potting has been good. Jimmy White hasn't done a huge amount wrong, but he's going to be 3-1 down. Despite that vintage century. 26. Players long game is often a barometer of their overall form and Robertson has looked something like the old Melbourne machine this evening from long range that one so sweetly struck yes the frame is over pressures off but even so I think there are signs here that he's coming back to his best we saw a bit of that against O'Sullivan last week in Preston we're seeing more of it this evening here in Cardiff and the whirlwind's on the wrong end of it at the moment. Neil Robertson, a frame away from victory, leading 3-1. Memories of the 1980s and 1990s whirlwind vintage.
But that aside, it's been all about Neil Robertson's excellence this evening. He's knocked in two centuries of his own and breaks of 54 and 34 in the fourth frame. Has put him within a frame of the round of 64. 3-1 he leads. This match has been going for under an hour and five minutes. It's flown by. And Robertson has looked very good, as good as he's looked, actually, for a fair few months. And this is the kind of red he normally devours when he's on form. Not this time. Oh, well, he's very lucky there. Yeah, I think he's left nothing. I think uh, remotely easy anyway. Playing well, and uh, of course, you get a little bit of a rub usually when that happens. Over the green, that is. It's a funny old game like that. Immediately held his hand up in apology to Jimmy for not leaving him a simple red there, but that won't be of much consolation to the whirlwind. Lots of snooker being played today on our ten tables. Lots of results coming in thick and fast. We'll bring you some of them in due course. Here we go. Stephen Maguire has beaten Zhang Yong of China 4-2. Great win for Sean O'Sullivan over Kyron Wilson. John Astley. Ian Priest. Astley 4-1 in that one. Poom Jang bowing out today. Kurt Mafflin has won comfortably. Luca Brussel up against the new German Masters champion, Anthony Hamilton, on table two. That's a match you can watch on the player, of course. There's um, Jimmy's frustration at the previous shot, I think. Speaking of Hamilton, of course, he uh, was brought down to earth last week in the World Grand Prix, losing heavily. Mark Callan, just a couple of days after that great victory. That's the nature of the game, isn't it? And uh, you know, Robertson, who made a point of the fact that in the last four tournaments, he's beaten, beaten three times by the eventual winner. Was lost last week to Barry Hawkins. Though he's taken all the positives he can out of defeat. Yes, I spoke to Anthony just before our match this evening began. It was the first time I'd seen him since he won in Berlin. I congratulated him and he said he was surprised by how calm he felt in the second session. Remember, he was being completely outplayed early on by Ali Carter, 5-2 down. And he looked, frankly, jaded from his late-night exploits in the semis. A match that didn't finish until 1 a.m. Then he had his media commitments. But he said that in the evening session, having managed to pinch the eighth frame to only trail by two, he just felt totally at peace and without nerves. And he put together some terrific breaks to break Ali Carter's resistance. It was a terrific win for Anthony and a very popular one. Jimmy watching on and wondering if perhaps he's played his last shot in this match. Another excellent long red from Robertson to get in. And the way he's been scoring this evening, he wouldn't bet against him. 16. Sealing the deal here. Seven. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. So Robertson is the man here. He's the man playing all the snooker now, as we've said, Jimmy, with a century in the frame he won. Yeah, and he's only missed two balls this evening, Jimmy. He's still got pot success of 94%, but it's been the odd loose safety that's cost him because Robertson is so lethal from long range when he's playing well. And 
equally so from short range this evening. This has been every good as every bit as good as the performance he put in to beat Ronnie O'Sullivan convincingly last week in Preston. Perhaps even more so. 33. Yeah, 41. Lee Walker awaits the winner. Well, this is the interesting stat on this match is the pot success is 94%, the pair of them. And uh, it's quite extraordinary. You think Jimmy's done precious little wrong, it proves that, but of course the uh, pot success Neil Robertson is over a longer period of time, more shots. Either way, it's been a good match as uh, those stats confirm. Well, you feel he's on the brink 56. here. There's just a little bit more to be done, but not a great deal. Still, well, 91 remaining. So you're talking quite a few reds, eight reds. But, of course, the points difference is going up. Every time a red's potted, the amount available is going down by eight. I think at the moment, one's going to pass the other fairly soon. No, might have overrun for the blue either that or he's finished okay on the pink but either way things still looking good the five reds in the bunch are the problem here at this stage they're fairly loose but they're not potable Robertson, 57. And the way he's been potting. He expected him to get that blue. Something of a reprieve for the whirlwind, but 57 behind, a lot to do to get back into this frame. Another half century from Robertson, his second of the evening, on top of the two century breaks he made. Neat safety shot there from Jimmy. And uh, he's actually put Robertson in a touch of trouble there. Well, I guess that was about as much as of, of the red he could hit. Played it well. position to go with it. Open to debate as to the, whether he went for it, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, because it was a fairly direct plant, didn't it? Didn't see him apologise.
green. Well, he had to get that, didn't he? And, uh, unfortunately, he's pushed the two reds safe that are down the table, the red on the side, because he's now even more safe than he already was. So, he's going to do very well to make this pay. This is horrible. Yeah, that's a horrible shot. When you're 3-1 down, he was a bit unlucky there, wasn't he, not to get a kinder kiss off that excellent cutback green. And to make matters worse, he's left this red for Robertson. That could be the beginning of the end for the whirlwind. He's had his moments tonight. That 102 break was one to save it. But it looks as though it's likely to be in vain. One. Well, well, well. Jimmy was one. out of his chair there, like a greyhound out of the traps. And uh, I know he's probably disappointed that he's put the black safe. But the fact remains, at least he is back at the table and he can win the frame, even though the reds are a bit tangled up. I think if he'd have played it slower, which of course was no good to him, that red would have dropped. He's missed it to the same side of the pocket as the previous red that he missed into there. Yes. That'll very much frustrate him. One. Well, I'm slightly surprised that ball dropped, to be honest with you, because it looks as though it was drifting to the far jaw. I've seen those hang on the lip before. Yeah, his aim was just to give it every chance, wasn't he, of dropping, and uh, but that was a much better shot than I'm afraid. The Jimmy White fans and enthusiasts, that is it. He won't be winning after that shot, because that uh, is multiple snookers if he breaks down at this point. Well, Jimmy coming back, and that's fair enough. He needs three snookers to tie. Highly unlikely. Always the chance of a free ball. Remember, Ryan Day managed to get four snookers. But he's conceded there, having lost position. So it's the end of the match, and you've got to give a lot of credit to Neil Robertson. He scored very heavily this evening. Two centuries, a half century as well. I think he had the rub of the green to go with it. Jimmy made a great century himself, but it's Robertson who goes through 4-1.